Diesel engines today are quite sophisticated with numerous control systems operating in concert, poised to optimize drivability and produce low emissions. Performing proper maintenance on these vehicles will go a long way towards helping provide trouble-free operation for your customers. Hi, this is Scott Brown and welcome to a MotorAge Service Done Right segment sponsored by Motorcraft. This video is specifically focused on diesel service as it relates to exhaust gas recirculation, EGR coolers, and their failure modes, and what can be done to help prevent such failures. Additionally, we'll cover many of the new technical features found within the diesel fuel filtration systems found on Ford's third generation diesel engine. So to begin, we'll discuss why we have EGR. EGR has been found to be highly effective at reducing NOx emissions. NOx occurs when nitrogen and oxygen is subjected to elevated temperatures during the combustion process. EGR is used to supplant some of the fuel-air mixture to keep peak combustion temperatures in check. With a turbocharged diesel engine, the exhaust gas temperature is extremely hot, and if introduced into the air charge through the EGR valve without reducing its temperature, this less dense air would result in reduced engine performance. Ford engineered coolers are highly effective at reducing these temperatures at significant levels due to their design. In fact, some aftermarket coolers have been found to only reduce the exhaust temperature by a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit, where the Ford coolers can drop the temperature by up to 950 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, it's possible to see a DTC P2457 EGR cooler performance being set due to diagnostic monitors if an aftermarket cooler is used. Failure modes. So let's talk for a moment about the typical failure modes and what can be done to help prevent these from happening. The two most common failures are coolant leakage and restriction. Since the coolant is used as a thermal transfer medium to pull heat out of the exhaust charge used for EGR, it's very possible for coolant to leak into the exhaust pathway. Usually the customer may complain about coolant loss with no visual signs of leakage. Or they may also see white smoke from the exhaust at times which could be caused by a cooler leak. One of the primary reasons for this type of failure can be directly attributed to poor vehicle maintenance. All engines today contain dissimilar metals which can lead to galvanic corrosion due to electrochemical incompatibility. And this is where cooling system maintenance plays a key role in preventing such failures. Another reason for failure has been due to low coolant levels. Since the EGR cooler is placed high in the cooling system loop, if air is introduced, then thermal transfer suffers, and this can quickly stress the cooler, causing it to fail. Periodic checks of all fluid levels will help in keeping these systems in proper working order. Utilizing the right coolant mixed properly with distilled water is the best practice in preventing cooling system failures. Be sure to reference the owner's manual or service information for the proper coolant as each is specifically designed for a specific application and you never want to mix the wrong coolant and introduce a problem. Motorcraft coolants have the proper convective heat transfer properties along with corrosion inhibitors and metal protectors to deter the previously mentioned galvanic corrosion. Now let's talk about failure mode number two, restriction. Exhaust flow restriction can occur within the EGR cooler due to excessive amounts of particulate matter, which can be directly attributed to less than ideal vehicle operation. Short trips that result in the engine not reaching normal temperatures can promote excessive particulates within the exhaust system. Additionally, excessively idling the engine can promote particulate buildup, so it would be wise to inform your customers about proper vehicle operation and maintenance. And finally, using the proper fuels and keeping the fuel system clean can serve well in achieving many miles of trouble-free operation. Now let's discuss fuel filters. As mentioned earlier, the 6.7 liter features the third generation diesel fuel system introduced to the market by Ford. This new generation power plant features much tighter tolerances for better efficiency and overall lower emissions. One of the biggest challenges in maintaining engine performance is a variance in fuel found in the marketplace. To address these challenges, Ford designed new filtration technologies. You should be aware that currently there are two filter designs. 
The fuel system found on vehicles through the 2019 model year are equipped with Diesel 3 Tech, which uses a Motorcraft FD4615 filter, which has water separation performance of 95% on a water droplet of 60 microns. Beginning in 2020, Ford introduced Diesel 3 Tech Plus, a significant upgrade with a new filter system that includes a new style primary filter, which can achieve greater than 98% water separation on 10 micron droplets. Both primary and secondary filters are included with the single part number FD4641. The new primary filter has a substantial number of new technologies that aftermarket filters simply don't have. In fact, Ford Engineering found that the aftermarket competitor to the primary filter found in the FD4641 only provided 65% water removal efficiency and had a 30 to 50% less life and inadequate degassing capabilities due to inferior design. A lot of engineering has gone into this filter design to keep this third generation Ford diesel engine running strong. And finally, due to the variance in diesel fuel quality, another best practice is to use Motorcraft PM22A, which is a cetane booster and performance improver. By definition, cetane is an indication of the fuel's combustion speed and the compression needed for ignition. The lower the number, the harder it is to ignite and combustion speed is slower. Once a diesel fuel cetane number drops below 40, engine performance issues are likely to surface. Poor cold start and warm up performance and rough running conditions can be caused by this. Adding PM22A as directed by the instructions included on the container can provide multiple benefits including easier startability, improved performance, and another bonus is that the additive also provides increased fuel lubricity to help reduce component wear. In conclusion, your best move is to use the parts designed, built, and tested by the same manufacturer that designed the vehicle since you'll be able to take advantage of the continuous improvements being applied to Motorcraft parts. I hope you found this video informative and thanks for watching.